Welcome to the special edition of Science in the Early Years Learning Framework. Now, one of the reasons why I've actually um, pieced this one together, how it's come about, is I've had a few emails from people um, really wanting to explore the connections between the, the EYLF and the ACS um, with the, the task in mind to create a digital learning card um, that translates from the foundation year back into the zero to five years. Here's assessment task number two, the digital card, just to remind you what it's all about. So we've got part A with 10 marks, and we've got some professional literature there, um, and I'll talk about this later, but and also in this week's Zoom session, but I'm actually allowing about um, 1,500 to 2,000 words for part A, so we're looking for quite a bit of detail. And in part A, you set up your part B. So in part B, we've got two digital cards, and as you can see, one of these digital cards actually relates to, and I'm just getting my pointer here, two digital cards, and one of the digital cards relates to um, one year level group and the second relates to a, a younger year group. So one task is, is basically going to scaffold independent learning for two groups of students in a primary classroom. And this is going to be built on the pedagogies you identify in part A. And you're going to use content from two strands, biological, earth and space sciences. So you're not allowed to do two cards on biology. You're not allowed to do two cards on earth and space sciences. You must do one card on either or. And one must be suitable um, for a prep to three classroom um, if you're a, a, an early years teacher. And the other one for the zero to five learner group. So part of the early years framework. So when we look at that, if you're um, registered as a early years teacher in uh, Queensland, you can teach from uh, age zero um, in the childcare centres right through to um, year three in a primary school setting. If on the other hand, um, you're, you're elevated to a primary school registration, then you can teach anywhere from uh, the foundation year right through to year nine in a Queensland secondary school. But the key thing here is the cards must be in digital format. Um, and that means obviously that you, know, you need to print them because for young learners, print is an important component. It's very textile, it's available 24 seven and it's handy. Um, so for the zero to five year old learner group, you're gonna have to print them, but bear in mind, you're gonna have some language issues to decide here because literacy is not high. Uh, word recognition, vocabulary is not high. There is no point producing something that is lexically dense for, y for young learners. Um, something that's textually too demanding. So you're going to have to think about how to combine images there with instruction for this learning group. So there's going to be some interesting pedagogical decisions you make. So we've got two cards, two pedagogies, and two different age groups. Now, if you're a secondary teacher, then clearly, uh, sorry, a primary school teacher, then clearly you will be able to pitch your cards, one card, for instance, at the uh, prep to three, foundation to three year, and one at the seven to nine year. And the reason we're doing this is to try and tease out your pedagogies at the upper and lower end of your teaching range. So we want you to identify two specific pedagogies. We want to look at two different learning ages and we want you to apply them in some context. Now an interesting question came from Jessie and she's looking for clarification. She's doing one card for prep to three. Great, okay, so she's obviously uh, primary or early, early years. Second card is zero to five, so she's obviously early years question is where do I find the strands when it comes to identifying the ACS EYLF strands for her digital card? She then goes on to answer her own question which I, this is the sort of question I really love, someone who answers their own question. It's brilliant. So she's basically saying are the strands from the ACS for example, the science understandings, human endeavour and inquiry skills and are the strands, uh, and are the strands from the EYLF the different learning outcomes? And the answer basically is yes. So you're on the right track there, Jesse. Well done. So the strands you use for the ACS are ACS strands. The EYLF strands are, in fact, the learning outcomes. The challenge in doing a good digital card and in selecting pedagogies and identifying the pedagogies is actually to connect them well and connect them effectively. So let's have a look at the EYLF and science education. Now, it gets updated regularly. Um, the first version came out around about 2009, I think, for the National Early Years Learning Framework. And ever since then, it's been updated. Um, I'm basing these comments and observations today on the Belonging, Being and Becoming document from 2018. And what it really does, it looks at learning outcomes for children from birth to five years. And notice the emphasis here is on transition to school. So it's a push-pull effect. We are pushing kids from these early years towards a structured national education system. It's a pipeline, and in that pipeline, they're gonna arrive in year one, 
um, ready to adapt and trans transition into the Foundations Year program. So the early years, we've got five outcomes, and you know, being experienced early years people, you will understand these. Um, they're very, very broad-based. Um, the Emilio Reggio um, regime is strong here. Um, the back, you know, the foundations of the baccalaureate. We've got the, the Steiner School perspectives, all very rich here on, on the wholeness and, and dealing holistically with the learner. Um, and it's part of a, a very, very strong person-centred curriculum. So these five items, um, strong sense of, of identity, connected to their world, strong sense of well-being, confident, effective communicators, we can see that they, you know, they're very much also connected to the ACS. These, these are the principles the ACS wants to bring through. So matching early years to ACS shouldn't be too hard. And for anyone who wants a copy of the PDF or the Word copy um, of this document, you can go to that URL that I've just highlighted. The point I want to make though is not every outcome is going to be equally represented in science learning sequence that you devise. Now for assessment task number two, you're going to pick a science learning sequence from the foundations units and then you're going to design a digital card based on target pedagogies within that science unit. Those pedagogies are going to be early years learning framework, uh, framework pedagogies, so they're not going to be ACS pedagogies. And your task is to make that exact translation. Now the EYLF comes from the Melbourne Declaration on, on uh, um, Educational Goals, it's, it's goal number two. And you can see that it's very global, successful learners, confident, creative individuals, active, informed citizens. Don't we all want that? And the early childhood and throughout life, relationships are crucial, so belonging is the central theme. To whom do we belong? Why do we belong? How do we belong? And of course you can see the socialisation context there, Bandura social learning. Childhood is also a time for being, and, and we often read about and talk about the shrinking childhood. Um, you know, the fact that we have many 30-year-old uh, um, mothers who, who very much dress the same way as their 8-year-old daughters. We have um, puberty, um, for instance, striking at earlier and earlier times. We have a more complex and demanding intellectual and emotional world. Um, and Carlos Hanare, in, in, you know, in the early 2000s, wrote a book in praise of slowness, um, around about the time Bill Gates was publishing at the speed of light. Um, and so the argument is, is slow or quick, slow or quick, slow or quick. What, what do we do for our kids? And, and this curriculum stresses slow. So becoming reflects the process of a rapid and significant change. And we look here at brain growth. Um, we, we know that we, for instance, around about the time we acquire language, we have our first major brain dump. And we only have three through our lives that we know of, but we have our first one around about the two to three year old uh, age group. And that happens because we're transitioning um, from a visual vocabulary where, where life is based on images and, and, and translational images um, through to a verbal vocabulary where we're starting to shed image in place of words. And, and Wittgenstein talks about this, Ludwig Wittgenstein, 1921. He, he wrote his first seminal paper. Um, what is a word? A word is really an image that gets linguistic expression. And, and this is what happens to our brains too. So these three themes give rise to five learning objectives in the EYLF, belonging, being and becoming. And it's these holistic approaches that, you know, that, that allows us to consider some, some equally holistic learning outcomes when we start to look at, at these five learning outcomes from the EYLF. But once again, I stress, we're talking about science learning. So not all science learning is gonna embrace all of the learning outcomes equally. What your task involves is looking closely at your curriculum, your foundation curriculum, and at your EYLF um, uh, learning outcomes, and matching them. You know, when we, we look at them this way, we can see here, for instance, um, here's your, your pyramid, belonging, becoming, being, your three themes. They're underpinned by learning outcomes, by early years principles, and by classroom practices. And this is, this is how you read your early years document. You know, when we look at science education, how, what are the learning outcomes we're going to embrace? What will the teaching principles we apply be? And what are the teaching practices in the classroom going to look like? And these are really the key questions here when we come to discuss this particular model. Now your task is to translate this model um, from an ACS framework back into the early years. And that's gonna mean thinking broadly, taking a helicopter view of the EYLF curriculum. So it basically encompasses all interactions, experience, routines and events, planned and unplanned. You know, and, and we've got the engaged, you know, the first E there. You know, unplanned, you know, we're dealing with misconceptions. An occur in an environment designed to foster learning. And the emphasis on the framework is very much on planned or intentional teaching. 
and what is included or excluded therefore um, is designed to affect how children learn, develop and understand their world. And so it's a model of curriculum decision making for the teacher and it's an ongoing cycle of the educator making decisions based on professional knowledge and the knowledge of each of the children in their care. So it's very, very student centred, the same as the ACS. Educators identify children's strengths and interests. Again, we usually do this at the diagnostic stage, the first engagement stage. We choose appropriate teaching strategies. We do that formatively through the second and third E, and then we design the learning environment in which these strategies will come to life and ultimately and hopefully achieve their goals. And of course, there's the assessment. Now, in the early years curriculum, assessment is not as structured. Okay, it's, you know, look at the cue there. Educators carefully assess learning to inform further planning. So it's very formative in nature. It's very much intuitive. It's very much about the one-to-one -one relationship, about what's going on in the ZPD. So when you're looking at your, your teaching sequence, pay careful attention to these principles. You know, the principles of the e early years childhood pedagogy underpin practice. Educators draw on a rich repertoire of pedagogical practices and got holistic approaches, learning through play, play-based learning. And look, I've, I've worked in many workshops with you know, the executives in the Commonwealth Bank and the Queensland Government in blue care organisations, and, and never do I go in there with serious material. I always go in there and approach learning, organisational learning, through the act of play. It's just the way in which people come to their, their sense of themselves and how they basically interact with others. And play is, you know, play-based learning is a fabulous vehicle. Intentional teaching. Physical and social learning environments, there's some tactility here, some, some kinesthetic um, stuff happening in this particular learning environment, which is really, really important, and that's going to impact on students' learning. Cultural and social context of children and their families, alternate pers perspectives, indigenous perspectives, religious perspectives, faith perspectives. You know, there are some people for whom, some families I know, for whom sustainability is almost at the same level as a religion. And of course, we're focusing on successful transition. You know, we're not teaching the students fixed and locational skills. We're teaching them skills that are going to transform them through the act of integration, collaboration, and learning. So, it, you know, it's about the teacher assessing and monitoring children's learning and, and how to achieve the, you know, the five learning outcomes. And you're not going to do all of these, as you don't in the ACS. We don't approach all of the learning outcomes in one hit. We try to look for them when they're relevant and to whom they're relevant. So you're probably quite familiar with the learning outcomes in the EYLF being early childhood teachers. You can see outcome number one, children have a strong sense of identity. Outcome number two, they're connected with and contribute to their world. And we can see this little elaborations underneath of each of these outcomes. They have a strong sense of well-being, two major elaborations, they're strong in their social well-being and they can take responsibility for their health and well-being. Outcome four, they're confident and involved learners. Okay, they're developing, they're transferring skills. There's a skills component here. And if we look closely, we can almost see the five E's you know, underpinning much of this. We can look at outcome number five and some of the science, the ex you know, express science implications here, symbols and patterns, ideas, make meaning using a range of media and data. Children engage with a range of texts and gain meaning from these texts. And these can be you know, visual text, artistic, creative, modelling, all these different strategies. Outcome number one. Let's look at some of the elaborations here that you, you will see coming through the science curriculum. We've got four areas. Children feel safe and secure. Children develop emerging autonomy. Children develop knowledgeable and confident identities. And children learn to interact. When we look at them, we can see that they can build up and culturally value child-rearing practices and approaches to learning. And this is basically what we try to do with inclusivity. This is what we try to achieve with the cross-curricular perspectives, isn't it? You know, it's, it's all here for us. We can make these connections without too much trouble, really. We spend time interacting and conversing with each child. And this is the nature, isn't it? The diagnostic, the first E, we can see it very much here. We acknowledge and respond sensitively. Okay, we're creating that zone, that the, the more capable other is coming to the foreground here. Okay, we're starting to look very much, you know, this outcome um, could well be connected to the first E. Autonomy, independence, resilience, a sense of agency. They're becoming active in their learning. So we give them opportunities to engage independently with tasks and with play. So, you know, here we're starting to look at how 
this may map out across you know that the, the investigative process through science investigations we provide time and space to engage both individual and collaborative pursuits we build on culturally valued models of learning so we integrate different stories different texts different narratives these are all the same things we've been doing with the ACS for five six seven weeks now and really the um, you know the early years learning framework is just a different way of, of conceptualizing these same principles so you know it it's should be relatively comfortable for you to make this transition into the early years model and to start to adopt some of these um, early years elaborations in your your cards and particularly your digital cards now encouraging children to make choices and decisions these these are all you know, negotiated curriculum some of the others and acknowledge and understand that children construct meaning in many different ways provide rich and diverse resources that reflect children's social worlds. So, you know, we're modelling too. We're interacting, we're modelling social experiences that sustain productive relationships with other children. And this is the role of the teacher constantly, isn't it? And, and we're looking at primary connections, for instance, which is really literacy, science literacy modelling. And, you know, later in the course, we'll meet Huey the helicopter and a, a lovely young male teacher who sits down with these kids and brings back the language of science you know we are doing some prediction here what is that p word we're doing some what is the o word observation okay and then we have to do what do we have to do we have to do something with e we have to explain so the kids are getting through the modeling act they're getting these these really rich um, science linguistic la uh, literacy lessons and we organize learning in ways and environments that promote small group interactions and play experiences and that is our digital card so whatever we do with our foundation year when we pull it back to the early years when we select some lessons out of the whole unit and sort of say here is a learning sequence I'm going to create a digital card to support that learning sequence okay we are organizing the learning environment for that particular task there are five outcomes okay it's gonna be a long task to go through all five so I'm going to cut it short as we go through but I want you to get the idea. I mean, we've got, you know, for outcome number two, two major elaborations here. Children develop a sense of belonging to groups and communities and, and, and reciprocal rights and responsibilities, always in democratic classroom things. You know, the old Dewey principles here coming to the fore. So as teachers, we try to manage this. We try to manifest this outcome by providing opportunities for children to investigate ideas, complex concepts, ethical issues. You know, a really, really good thing to do at the early years level. Children very much engage in a world when they, you know, they believe the world is a fair thing and they can influence and, and develop that concept of fairness. Ensure that children have the skills to participate and contribute to group play and projects. Look at this one. We're actually talking here about you know, skills, science inquiry skills. Um, and that science inquiry, inquiry at this stage is, is play. It's a play-based pedagogy. So we are getting children to play, act, play, explore, play, elaborate the world. Um, and we're doing that in ways that hopefully brings their understanding to the foreground. So when we, we look at you know, our early years curriculum, we can see that you know, the role of the teacher is, is modelling. The role of the teacher is very much rolling out you know, and feeding the chickens, so to speak. And we're engaging children in experience, conversations and routines. You know, we're slowly organising what is essentially a disorganised um, play-based world. We try to model and reinforce health and nutrition and, and give them the practices that go with it. And ultimately, they become socially responsible and show respect for the environment. Now, under outcome two, now under this particular elaboration, you can see a lot of things that science does. Sustainability, natural materials, respect, care for the environment. Okay, we can go on and look at all of these individually, but I think you get the idea. You know, embedded in these units, um, caring for the land, you know, connectedness to the land, sharing, sharing of information, you know, distributing, communicating information, embedding, embedding sustainability in daily routines and practices. All of these things you know, are very much science. Outcome number three, I've just skipped a little bit there. Outcome number four, it's really too much to talk about. You know, I, I don't want to um, labour the point, but you can see here it really is very much children are confident and involved learners. And just looking at that outcome, you can see the strength of science education in it. 
we develop dispositions. Now, the word dispositions appears in the EYLF. What it really means is capabilities, and in the ACS we call them gen generic capabilities. And we've got seven of them. Um, in, in you know the early years, we call them dispositions. A disposition is a leaning or, or a cap capacity. And when we look at those capacities, we can see inquiry processes, wonder, curiosity, imagination, trying new ideas. We can see all of these different principles are largely scientific. Look at this one. Children develop a range of skills and process problem solving, inquiry, experimentation, hypothesizing, research, and investigating. This is the science inquiry process, isn't it? These are the inquiry skills. So when children develop a disposition, we give them opportunities to revisit their ideas. We're talking here about the explore and explain stage, aren't we? And then we get to the inquiry skills. We're talking here about the, the elaborate stage. The elaborate and ultimately we'll move from here onto evaluation. So when we look at these outcomes, we can easily map the five E's onto it. You know, even, even down to the stage we're providing babies and toddlers with resources. Providing experiences that encourage children to investigate and problem solve. Now, really rich, rich tasks that experience and support the investigation of ideas, conflict concepts, thinking, reasoning and hypothesising. And the whole aim is to transfer learning. Support children to construct multiple solutions to problems. You know, we are really looking here at transformational learning. And these are the principles also embedded within the Australian curriculum. So when we look at the first E and second E, you know, we've got children developing dispositions, they're exploring, they're, they're developing and testing their dispositions. Then we can get into, you know, the, the scientific inquiry skills where they're developing the talents or the capacities or the capabilities to do investigations. And then down here in the remaining two, we're looking at the, the you know, the elaboration and evaluation stuff where they're moving into their own worlds. They're, you know, using technologies to apply and test theories and they're starting to co-construct, co-construct their own knowledges. So we've got the same continuum here from deconstruction, working closely with the child in their own world, through reconstruction, through developing dispositions, and through those dispositions giving them the skills to shift through, and ultimately into reconstruction and co-construction where the teacher's guiding the learner. Outcome number five, children are effective communicators. And here we can see a lot of the, the science literacy skills that we talk about, interacting verbally and non-verbally with others for a range of purposes. And modeling language, language in context, sustained communication about scientific ideas. These are all things that you can include in your lesson. These are all you know, outcomes that you can equate and, and that you can attach to your pedagogies, you know, in part A of your assignment. Children engage with a range of texts and gain meaning from these texts. And we can look at art, we can look at model making, we can look at 3D modelling, we can look at, at simulations. Children use information and communication technologies, and here we've got the digital card. The digital card is the context to provide children with access to a range of technologies through this exercise, to give them experiences and projects to look at, to teach skills and techniques, new information and represent their ideas. This is the model we're aiming for. This is the sort of approach we're trying to inc inculcate in the learners. But I want to point out again that not all learning outcomes articulate directly to the ACS Foundation's uh, units model. Okay, What you need to do is pick some that do. Pick your Foundation's unit. Once you've identified a Foundation's unit, okay, you can then start to put together aspects of that unit, lessons, which become a learning sequence. From that learning sequence, you will design you know, a digital card. And that digital card will have a place in that sequence in a way that's going to consolidate your learning goals. So the take home message today, use the ACS Foundation units to identify a learning sequence. This learning sequence will define the strand, the substrand, and the elaborations of your learning sequence. And from the foundations, you identify which lessons you're going to include in that sequence. It could be two, three, or four lesson sequence. Anything beyond four is too much. I'd go for three. Three lessons as a learning sequence. And your digital card is going to fit into that sequence. You know, go back to last week. 
uh, when, when we had Paul Stannard talking about flipping the classroom. How will you flip your classroom to incorporate you know, a digital card? And that digital card, what role is it going to play in your teaching and learning? Is it going to be at Bloom's very early levels? Are you going to give them some extension activities, your card giving extension activities, at the end of the teaching and learning? What are you going to gain in the classroom by flipping it and putting a digital card in place? Will that digital card require adult supervision, particularly for the zero to five groups? Don't go to four lessons. It's better to stick to three, because three will enable you to follow the inquiry steps of diagnostic, investigation, and discussion. Those three critical um, inquiry steps that you know that fit into any inquiry model. So look at the teaching strategies embedded in the lessons that you choose for your sequence, and then try and group them. Try and group them according to the learning outcomes in your e early years learning framework. Once you've done that, okay, you're in a very, very good position to justify the pedagogy and approach that you're going to use in your learning sequence. And that pedagogy and approach will then include and explain and justify your use and application of a digital card. And that's the whole purpose of this. You've got a small lesson sequence. You want to flip the classroom. You're going to include some learning outcomes okay, in that flipped task in your digital card. And that digital card is going to play a role in your broader learning sequence. And that's what Part A is all about, explaining to us what is your learning sequence, what is your digital card, what role does it play in that learning sequence, and how does it add value. And part of the role here is to curate appropriate resources for your digital card. Now, in Week 8, um, in the uh, stages f uh, 3 and 4, of the week eight uh, ebook, I give you lots of resources there, possible resources, digital resources that you might be able to use to build a lesson in biological sciences. Also, um, look, look at some of the, the downloadable resources too, you know, field studies, field guides. And in this week's Zoom session, I'll talk to you in some detail about um, how a lesson sequence can be converted um, in, into a digital card. So hopefully we'll pick that up at this particular stage. So early childhood folk, um, the digital card is designed to target your learning outcomes. Those learning outcomes come from the early years learning framework. Right. Your challenge is to pick out the ones, match them up to your ACS unit, and make sure there's some consistency and, and, and explanation and detail there.